All right, guys, thank you for joining me today. Today is the day that my faithful followers have been waiting for, especially horseplay motoring. Uh, me and Patrick have been back and forth about this for a while on what I'm gonna do. And today, guys, is the day I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So today is the day that you're finally gonna be seeing the car video. And when I say the car video, I mean the video you guys have been waiting for. I am finally getting another car and it is not gonna be a four door car. It's not a car for my wife. It's not a new truck, It's not gonna be a new boat. We've done all these things already. We are getting another sports car today. Um, so first thing we're gonna have to do is clean up all this mess because I said my garage would never be this. Being a car guy, I would never have a storage garage. Um, this garage has just turned into complete shit since I haven't had a car. It has been storage for boat stuff and I just threw a desk out here and doing miscellaneous projects. Uh, I got the quick jacks out on this bay uh, because I've been working on the uh, Mazda Speed uh, the other week. Getting ready to get rid of that. Get rid of that. Um, so we got to get this cleaned up. Uh, the other problem I'm going to show you in a second here is it's been raining for, I don't know, four days straight and it is obviously still raining. So uh, me and the wife are going to be taking a road trip in the Q50 down to uh, Virginia. We're going down to Vienna, Virginia to go pick up my new vehicle. And unfortunately, because of behind me, you're going to see the drive back is probably going to be a little dicey and it's going to suck a little bit, honestly, because I'm not going to be able to open it up. I'm not going to be able to enjoy my new car that I've been dreaming about and lusting about for a while. Uh, so that's going to kind of suck, but we're going to make the best of it and uh, we'll get uh, some video on the way down there and get you some video there and Hopefully you guys approve of uh, what I'm doing and opening up a new journey for the channel. So, like always, I am waiting on my wife. This is the only thing I regret on ever asking her to go with me on road trips. I set an absolute time I want to be out the door. She goes, no problem, I'm going to be ready early. And we are now at that time and she is still in the bathroom, still getting ready. Um, you know, I'm anxious. I'm excited to get on the road. Got a little bit of stomach agita. I'm spending a lot more money than what I wanted to spend. Um, and yeah, and it's raining. So I'm excited, but I want to get the show on the road. I want to get to the dealer and get this car picked up. So hopefully we're going to be on the road shortly. So only a half an hour off of schedule. Um, this was actually probably the uh, least off of schedule that my wife has been when we take road trips. False. Um, <laughs> um, actually, she was fairly on point when we went to go pick up the GT500, only because we had to catch a flight. Um, but otherwise, my wife is terrible about sticking on schedule uh, when we're going on a road trip. So it is now, you know, 9.30, and I wanted to leave at 9, so we're getting out of here. It's 9.20. Now i got to figure out how to use the navigation in this thing, because this is kind of terrible to navigate through. So now i got to figure this out, and we'll get on the road. All right, destination set. And I could have sworn I said last night that it was going to be two hours, but it looks like it's three hours and eight minutes. Uh, we're going to see if we can find a better route, maybe. All right, we might actually have some kind of glimpse of positivity. I'm starting to see some blue skies outside of the clouds as we're heading down south. I'm hoping that means it's gonna stop raining, but uh, we shall see. As you can see, it's actually raining harder as we're getting into the nicer areas. Go figure, but hopefully that's a sign that uh, we might actually get a little bit of sunlight and some dry roads here, so. In about one mile, Keep to the right onto I-95 South, then keep to the right. All right, we're about 11 miles out now. Looks like it's gonna be about another 20 minutes. And I forgot how terrible it is to drive down to Virginia. I try and avoid 95 South as much as I can, but it seems like it is like unavoidable, any route that I choose on my navigation, so. This is just a terrible, 
terrible drive to come down here. But uh, on the positive side, it looks like the sun is peeking out a little bit. We still got a good bit of clouds, but the uh, roads are dry. So you guys will actually get to see the car clean, hopefully. And uh, it will be less of a dicey drive home in the rain. That's what I'm hoping for, at least. So we'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. Uh, after a long, stressful drive, we are finally here at the Mopar dealer. And let's see where to get into this place. You are one tenth of a mile from your destination on the left. Alright, we are here at our destination. All right, so if you guys haven't figured out yet, we are at a uh, Chevy dealer. Chevy dealer that has many other things, but what could we be looking at here today? Um, I saw the car from the highway, and I see it coming up here, so how are you doing? Man, look at that reflection in the window. Look at that thing. Well, guys, here it is. All nice and cleaned up. Finally, I uh, think I found the one. So I figured if I was going to overpay for anything right now, I was going to overpay for a not base model. And as you guys can see, this is not a base model. Let me take a minute to look this over, make sure it's everything I thought it was going to be uh, before we take it out for a test drive and uh, go do paperwork. All right, so we're getting ready to do the paperwork on the new C8. And John said we should get a C8 instead. All right, guys, I don't want to record inside because I'm still a little weird about being on camera in public. But uh, we're just finishing up the paperwork, and then we're going to be getting out of here soon. Uh, so, again, here's the car. Um, they didn't do a great job detailing it. Uh, it is not entirely what I expected, but a lot of it is just cosmetic, cleaning it up, most of it. But, um, again... My thing was, if I'm going to overpay, I'd rather overpay for something that's not a base. And this is definitely not a base. Like I said. Um, so, I am not 100% uh, on what I'm paying with this. Um, but uh, it is pretty nice. Alright, so as I'm looking at it more, I'm finding more imperfections. So I'm trying not to look at this too deep because I'm going to start getting pissed off with as much money as I'm paying for this. Um, but I did think that this was a bone stock car. It is not 100% bone stock. So I actually found out it doesn't have the uh, NP, whatever they call it, MPI or whatever, the valve exhaust. Um, somebody took that off and put on courses. I don't know if they're just course of tips uh, because the mufflers don't look like they would be you know thousand dollar plus mufflers like you're used to with Corsa um, so I don't know if it's full mufflers or just the tips um, it is a 1LT package um, so fairly basic um, it does have the clear top it does not have the colored top with it um, so that kind of sucks because I hear some people have some back and forth about the tops but uh otherwise it dries pretty good from the quick rip around the block i gave it um i believe this has a tr6060 if i'm correct and this actually shifts a shit ton better than the tr6060 that was in my gt500 so that is a nice plus um yeah other than that it's basic it's got some shit i'm gonna peel off it's got some peeling off stickers on the dash somebody must have put on and got some yellow pinstriping in the doors i'm going to be peeling off so um, once i get back to pa first thing i'm going to do because i got to wait two or three weeks or so for the registration to come through to inspect it so it gives me some time to let it sit in the garage and look at it and clean it up and get it to where i feel it is perfect enough and then uh, we'll go from there so we're going to finish up some paperwork and we'll get back on the road well I'm only about, I wanted to say only 10 minutes into my drive, but I'm like a half an hour into my drive, maybe. Um, I only probably went about eight miles because traffic down in Virginia sucks absolute donkey dick. Um, I don't know, man. So far, this car has given me some, some bad juju. Um, as soon as I went to get in it from the dealer, me and my wife went out for lunch and got back in it at the dealer the hvac was just blinking the screen was just blinking i'm like okay what the hell's going on 
um, shut the car off, get out to go talk to the dealer because I haven't even left yet. And then the horn's beeping um, like the key fob was still in the car, which it wasn't because it was in my pocket. So that was weird. Pull around the service real quick and everything starts working fine. Uh, this year doesn't have Bluetooth and I wanted to have some tunes on the way home so I went and got a uh, aux to lightning cable for my iPhone uh, to be able to listen to some music and this thing is constantly disconnecting the aux um, so that's another thing not a big deal because I was going to swap the radio anyway but it's still beyond the point I shouldn't be having issues already then I get I don't know eight or ten miles down the road and then the freaking TPMS light comes on for my rear left tire um, got out of the car and tire looks fine so I guess just maybe the TPMS sensor just happened to go bad I uh, wanted to go adjust the seat and the uh, seat felt like it went off of the track uh, for the back adjustment I don't know how the hell that happened to miss a line but I was able to readjust it get it back snapped back in so it wasn't bouncing around but and so far for only being like I said maybe 10 miles or so to my drive um, it's making me a little bit nervous on this three and a half hour drive home it's probably gonna take even more um, at this point I'm already separated from my wife because I had to pull over on the side of the road two times now uh, due to some weird electrical glitches so I'm kind of hoping this isn't going to be indicative of my uh, ownership with this car and then I didn't just get into something that's got some weird gremlins. So, fingers crossed. Um, we'll see how the rest of the trip goes. But, like typical fashion, if I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have luck at all. So, let's see how it goes. Let's see you guys have been. All right, so we're quite a bit further into the trip. I just got back to, I think I just hit Pennsylvania now. Uh, so, I probably got about another hour. So until I get back to my house, um, other than actually an hour, 17 minutes, my phone just popped up and told me this for some reason. Um, the car is driving good other than the weird electronic glitches. Um, the cable thing, I don't know, maybe it's an issue with the cable. I just went and got the uh, aux to um, lightning cable at uh, Best Buy. It was an insignia whatever their default brand is. Maybe it's a compatibility issue with that cable. Maybe iPhones don't like to be used via aux anymore since that shit is like archaic. Um, so maybe I'm gonna blame that one on that because no matter what I did, how I held that, it would just disconnect. I had the damn phone in my lap. I would jiggle on the radio. Um, there's a little crack on the adapter on the radio. So I thought it maybe it was that, but I jiggled that around. It doesn't go off. It'll just go off at random times. So I'm thinking maybe it's an incompatibility uh, issue with the cable itself. Uh, the TPMS sensor, I don't know. I'm kind of curious if I get that tire off. This fucking, is this a McLaren coming up on me? No, it's a brand new, actually a C8 vent coming up on me now. How funny is that? Bright orange, oh, I think it's amazing. sensor jiggling around. I wonder if it came loose or I don't know maybe it was just a freak thing but otherwise the car seems to be driving pretty good. Um, I got a little bit of a little bit of shimmy in the wheel you know above 80 miles an hour. Um, so I don't know I'm just gonna keep an eye on stuff. Um, seems to be doing decently well over rough roads and potholes and shit. I really thought I was gonna be bottoming this thing out everywhere and uh, that's not entirely the case, so that's good. I like that. Um, do get a little bit of wind noise inside the car uh, with the top not having any kind of uh, insulation on the top, uh, but it's not terrible. Like I looked at a 2013 a few weeks ago that I almost bought that I didn't tell you guys about. Um, that had the <clears throat> fiberglass top that was insulated, the regular body panel matched, uh, body color matched one. And that thing creaked like crazy, made all kinds of noises. So I was kind of hoping I wasn't going to get into something like that. So I would say this is a bearable amount of noise. I would say it's maybe a little bit less than what my convertible SN95 was. Um, these Corsa mufflers, um, I don't really hear them. So I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know. 
I kind of want to hear them a little bit, but um, inside the car you can't really hear much at all. Um, I'm sure outside you can hear it a little bit though. I know when I downshift you can hear a little bit of burble. Um, so I know they're doing something. Um, but other than my random rant, uh, it seems to be doing pretty good. Uh, fuel economy, doing about 80. I'm hitting like 24 miles per gallon, so that's not terrible. I mean, this thing is humming at, you know, like I'm doing 65 right now in six gear, and I'm going 1,500 RPMs. Um, at like 80, this thing's going like 1,800, maybe 2,000 RPMs. So they seem to be pretty damn good on gas mileage. Um, I can't knock that too much at all, to be honest. Um, actually, another thing I want to add while it's fresh on my mind. Um, if you've never driven a C6 before, <clears throat> the body lines are very eccentric. And obviously, you can tell that by looking at the car. It's got a big, bubbly body. Um, the driving the car, the fenders, the front fenders look huge, the way they you know, hump over. Um, the mirrors are very small. The back window on these things are enormous, but with the way that your view looks out of the rear view mirror, um, you see like nothing out of the back window. It's at least out of the rear view mirror. It's like, it feels like you're seeing like this much, literally the width of the mirror. Um, so I will say that looking at the, the side mirrors, um, the body lines, again, you know, with this being a wide body car, it is very voluptuous. Um, so looking at the mirrors and looking over the hood when you're driving it is definitely a different kind of experience, that is for sure. Uh, much different than uh, any other car that I've had. Um, I won't say that the blind spots are terrible, but um, it will definitely take some getting used to. All right, so I made it home safe. However, it looks like the HVAC went offline again. Instead of blinking like the screen was doing earlier, the screen is completely dead. I don't know if this is a common thing with these. I obviously haven't had a chance to look it up yet because I just got home, but I have nothing. I have no HVAC, I have no blower, no controls. I got no nothing. So if I wanted to use the heat tonight, I kind of would have been screwed. Um, here is the other thing. So you're gonna see that the TPMS sensor uh, went dead again. This was uh, about 10 miles into my drive. You can see the front ones are fine, and the rear, rear left went offline. Um, I don't know what is up with that, um, but again, I'm not entirely happy about it after how much money I spent on this thing. Um, so I sent this over to the dealer. Also, like I said, the aux thing going offline. Um, I don't know, I'll dig into it tomorrow, I guess, and I'll show you guys a little bit more in the car. Yeah, so this is a uh, sphincter puckering experience right now. Going forward was a no-go. Uh, I think going in reverse is pretty much going to be a no-go. I mean, I might just be able to get that. Fuck, man. That's tight. That is tight. I'm going to have to figure something else out. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get some two by sixes or something and get creative and maybe see if I can get a set of those uh, Bridger curb ramps All right, so curb two Corvette one I fucking won but it was dicey as hell so going in front there was just no chance the the front uh, Splitter was gonna scrape regardless going in backwards um, as you guys saw it was just you know the side rockers were gonna hit right there so what i did was i got some i don't know what those are two by sixes maybe grabbed some two by sixes that i had sitting in the shed and just stacked them three out to get enough uh, elevations i got you know two inches of elevation inch and a half of elevation just to be able to get those rocker panels to um, be able to clear they just cleared and the spot where I drug the under lip, so I guess that's the lip under the um, radiator support, did scrape right on that threshold there. Um, and typically I would not back up my driveway because that is an absolute nightmare and it's just dicey. Um, maybe I'm just kind of over 
um, over complicating it a little bit but I'm used to cars with very heavy clutches and there's no way you're doing that in a car with a heavy clutch it's just a pain in the ass because it's jerky but as you can see I made it and even without a backup camera um, so that spot right there was the only spot that scraped uh, going in through this threshold was actually good I didn't hear any scraping on that threshold um, and we got it in the garage there wasn't too too much jerkiness this car is wide though so it's it was dicey i mean it looks like there's a lot of space but when you're looking at it out the very tiny mirrors and trying to go at an upward uh angle it it's dicey again i i've never backed into this garage um front fenders you can see are wide but thing is looking at the wide looking at the rear fenders um, so i just felt like i had no space so this will work if I got to do it. I know I can do it now. Um, I might have to look at some Bridget ramps. Uh, I got to do a little bit of research today. That will work, but I don't want to have to leave it like that because it looks like shit. Last time I talked to the township, they said I couldn't do curb ramps and they would find me and I couldn't keep them out. Yada, yada, yada. But I think I'm just going to do it. Um, we're going to see. But like I said, it is in here. I can start detailing it. Uh, again, I'm not really happy about how this thing looks but it is in here i have a decent amount of space left over in the back I'm, i actually think i have a little bit more space with this than with the gt500 now that i look at it um it does give a good bit of space the other reason i don't want to back it in is because i have concrete on this side so trying to get my fat ass out of the car is a little tough uh, without banging it off of the concrete so i think i'm going to throw some kind of rubber or something up against that to uh make that a little bit easier to deal with Whew. all right one crisis averted now we got to get on to uh cleaning this thing up a little bit and figuring out uh figuring out what's what and see if we can get it to the cleanly le cleanliness level level that i expected and uh get this thing ready to cruise Again, that's deceivingly low. It doesn't look too bad from the front bumper, but when you see the tray underneath, and you can see somebody's bottomed that thing out before, no surprise. All right, guys, so I guess we are going to finish the video here. Uh, the car is home. It is in the garage. It is happy. Uh, we just got to go through the next steps. So thank you again for joining me on this journey. Uh, I hope you guys approve of the purchase. Uh, it wasn't kind of hard to figure out what I was going for. Um, as I told you guys before what I was looking at, uh, I just didn't think it was going to be a grand sport. So uh, again, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. And uh, hopefully look forward to the next set of videos as they go. Uh, I'm not sure what that is going to entail yet. I have a few ideas, um, but we'll just kind of wing it and go from there. So we'll talk to you guys uh, on the next one.